Man, oh man. That was a little bit of a process. What, what Remember, you found online somewhere there was a, uh, like a, um, a difficulty level, uh-huh, like, you uh-huh, know, one uh-huh. to five or whatever it was. What, um, I think, do you remember what those criteria were? I don't remember the specific criteria, but because this one had muddling involved, mm-hmm. I think this one is probably a three. I mean, it's not just muddling. You're, you're muddling blackberries and mint. orange and mint. No orange. Or not orange. I'm sorry, lemon. Yeah. But it's only the lemon juice. It's not right. like the lemon. Okay. Shall we get to it? Yes. Let's. I'll give it a little bit of space. Okay, space is over. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, dear listener, to another episode, whether it be regular or bonus. I th- said, see, I said I was going to leave it vague. And you didn't. And but I that's didn't. all right. I just it's all right. stuck my finger in it, and now it's mine. Anyway. We just well, wanted a drink. Welcome to another, <laughs> another episode. We took the Ghostwood Barrel Strength, or, or Barrel Proof, um, a blended bourbon whiskey, and... Uh, we made a blackberry smash out of it, the blackberry bourbon smash with uh, with ghostwood, and uh, just by watching this thing get put together by uh, uh, W2's knowing hands, um, it it turned out absolutely beautiful. You can see um, pictures of this uh, up on our socials, uh, and, the, and the, the color of this thing. Yes, yeah. is... and uh, you can see a, a picture of the cocktail on uh, savertheburn.com slash cocktails you're gonna find it yeah. you're gonna you're gonna be like wow it really sucks to be me because i wasn't there <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this thing is absolutely beautiful uh where did you you did you find this just right there on their website this is off of their website on the yeah. ghostwood uh website yes indeedy very cool well it had a few steps but uh it looked simple enough to make this uh it started with uh your your muddling things you put your berries and your mint leaves along with your uh, lemon juice in the in your mixing your shaker. Then you muddled all that together, added your bourbon, added your ice, shook the shit out of it, poured, it, double strained it mm-hmm. over um, over get the, uh, a solid ice cube. Can I get those seeds out? Right. Yeah. And now it's just sitting here looking pretty. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to try it. What you said? It's got some nose. It bit. does have some nose. It's minty. Minty berry bourbon. Cheers, sir. Cheers. That's like summer in the dead of winter. That's that's pretty fantastic. Yeah, there's not too much mint to piss you off. No. It's there. You can t- it, the, the mint comes through on the finish. But and, the berry is there the whole time. Yeah. Ghostwood's recipe <clears throat> called for their regular bottle. Yeah. Because we enjoyed it so much and we had the barrel proof bottle, we decided to use that one in this. And I doubled their, their recipe because I knew that these were double rocks glasses. So mm-hmm. even though their picture I, I think I think the glass in their picture is is the smaller diameter round glass. Um, because there's just no way it's the same size glass as this with half the liquid, unless they just left it in the shaker. You know, that's the bartender's cut. Yeah, I mean they, <laughs> right? <laughs> they have it made up with just regular cubed ice. They do. They do. Uh, whereas we used one large cube. Mm-hmm. Well, this is all around sweet. This would this would be great. In, in the summer. Yeah. Any any social gathering whatsoever, poolside, uh, watching the scenery walk by. Um, I mean, who doesn't love... I mean, blackberries scream summer fruit. Blackberry paired with that mint yeah. is really fantastic. I, I, I just cannot get over the color of this drink. It's the, beautiful. The, the blackberry smashed in there with a little bit of that lemon juice mm-hmm. and the the natural amber colors of the the whiskey has made this just the most beautiful crimson red color. Yeah, it's almost like a dark um, well, maybe a lighter purple wine. Mhm. Delicious. 
<laughs> and beautiful. I know you're just gonna you're gonna undercut yourself on your presentation. <laughs> I like how the finish sticks with you. The on the finish is where yeah. I can uh, where where that the the spirit comes through. That is tasty. What'd you give it on the nose? I mean, you got berry, you got mint, you got bourbon. I know, and, and I probably undercutted it. You know, and the nose is great. Uh, and I I pointed that out immediately, and I still gave it a three and three quarters. You did what? I, I know, I know. I'm not far away. I'm at a four. Okay. Yeah. So that's I mean that's totally fine. It's a summer cocktail. You gave it three and three quarters. I'm gonna write that down. I'll drink it all day long. Right. All day, air day. Air day. Air day. <laughs> um, America. Maybe with a splash of uh, ginger beer in this, give it a little bit of a, a fizz. A blackberry bourbon bubbly smash? What, what would they call if, that? I don't know, but what if mix it and repair it, prepare, <laughs> prepare it the same way? How'd that go again? <laughs> <laughs> That's why she loves you. <laughs> Prepare it the same way, but pour it into a highball, a Collins glass. Okay. And then top the top off with that ginger beer. Okay. Okay. I wonder if this would be a good uh, freezer door candidate, except for the citrus. Does berry? No, they, they, no? they do not hold up. Okay. Day of, sure. You could freeze a door day of. Like for okay. a, for a gathering, that would explain do it why that my early that morning my a, mulberries don't really do well. Like <laughs> I, I I I froze a bunch of mulberries this spring uh, when winter came, or actually when my son came uh, back in uh, when the hell was that August August yep yeah when he came to town I uh, I started making some uh, those uh, berry mulberry bourbon smashes and it just it wasn't the same like the color wasn't right and it just didn't quite taste the same i think i win yeah you definitely win <laughs> that the one in the they got a straw in it they do have a straw in it who's fucking drinking their cocktails with a straw no men don't use straws in their cocktails no pinkies up there, there was a time when i would take the uh, the cocktail straws and i'd stick them in my ear or i'd put them in my <laughs> pocket so i could keep track of how many i had because i would drink too many <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how many I had. Then the wife at the time would be all pissed at me. You motherfucker. Spending all our money on drinks. <laughs> and rightly so. She had right to be. And uh, Davey's Uptown, uh, we'd play there uh, from time to time. You played Davey's Uptown, oh, right? Oh, yeah. With, uh, I've played that a with, bunch of times. With, with Burn the Gates? Burn the Gates, previous bands, yep. Yeah. Uh, Burn okay. the Gates has played there a handful of times. A handful of times? Yeah, yeah, it's piece. really kind of a small stage. It was, I think, a little too high off the ground. But going back a few years, uh, not burn the gates, not one degree difference. Even uh, further, even further back, in the way way back machine. I don't, I don't know what band that would have been, mm. but uh, once upon a time, Davies Uptown was not the the two sided club. Yeah, it was just the one. It, it was just the one where little, the main bar is. Little shotgun bar. And then there was that little stage kind of area underneath the 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 st- the stairs. Yeah. Or whatever that was. And it there. was ground level stage, right? right? Yeah. I I've, I've played there. <laughs> I never did. I I never saw anybody use it except for a karaoke. So. That's going back a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But that would have been mid nineties. Unfortunately, that's just one of those bars. It, it didn't succumb to COVID. It wasn't a casualty of COVID. But uh, they they caught fire one yep. day. Yep. I I'm, I'm sure they figured out what caused it, but it just sucks. It's gone. It never recovered. It never nope. came back. I I think Michelle moved on. Yeah, I don't blame her. She had it open for a long time, and everybody seemed to love it. Yep. Everyone it was liked her like too. Almost like a rite of passage. A, r- mm-hmm. a rite of passage to play Davies Uptown there in uh, Grand Emporium. I never got to play Grand Emporium when uh, before the remodel, um, back when the uh, there was like flyers oh, and shit all over the walls oh, when it looked yeah. like a really cool place. So, a rock tail. There you go. 
Uh, one degree difference. Okay. The Grand Emporium used to have Metal Mondays. Yeah. And one degree difference played a Metal Monday. We weren't metal. We were hard rock. That's all right. But um, the afternoon, early evening show on Mondays was Bluegrass. Oh, shit. In one degree difference, we frequently made it a point to always not just be punctual, but if it was a new venue, we would get there early. Yeah. I think I may have told a a story once upon a time about uh, our um, Belanca's Pyro Room Mm. uh, and the the fetish uh, group that was meeting down in the, the lower basement when we showed up about an hour before we were technically supposed to. That that does not sound familiar. No, that may be another story. That that would be a great But this story, story. Metal Monday, we showed up uh, a little bit early. Uh, I think we were supposed to be there about 6, 6.30. Show was going to go on at 7. We were, we were not the opening band, but again, we like to be there on time, prompt. And so this was actually our first time playing the Grand Emporium. So we got there early and we walk in and that afternoon was bluegrass time. And there were a bunch of good old boys, Mm -hmm. older boys in full on coveralls and straw hats sitting around. Bluegrass. And there was, you know, uh, acoustic guitars and banjos on stage Fucking and wash wash, wash uh, tubs. W- yep uh, the the, the little wash uh, base. washboards washboards okay yes okay. washboards and and, and uh, oh the spoons okay <laughs> Zzz, you know all that stuff was going on and uh, we were not not yeah that had not even registered us and we're just like. What the fuck did we get into? What kind of hillbilly hell did we walk into? And then we realized what was going on. And then, you know, they they ended like at six. Uh, I think we got there right about five. Okay. Uh, But they they finished up at six and they promptly moved on and they wanted nothing to do with what was coming in. So they quickly exited the building Mm -hmm. and and everything. But that was a sight to be seen. Hmm. And then you fast forward uh, a couple years. Um, One of your difference was around for 2002 through 2012. Okay. 2011. Solid chunk of time. Yeah. Ten year. Mm -hmm. You fast forward a couple years into that, and right just before the Grand Emporium started to transition, well... Eventually, the Grand Emporium transitioned into uh, Aurora, I think is the name of the, the club now. Hmm. Now it's just a full-on dance club. The, the, that's what's there now. Yeah. But but there was a time in there that I think at least everyone still called it the Grand Emporium. but And they still did rock and metal shows. But at like 1130, the bands had to be done and off stage because the DJ was coming in and it was dance <laughs> hour. And we played there one night. And before we had all of our equipment out of the building, it was elbow to elbow to. Yeah. I saw that happen at Metal Wars one time. <sighs> you remember the old Metal Wars? The, oh, uh, yeah. the Kilroy, Kilroy production. All right. All right. All right. He Apple would have uh, <laughs> that. That came much later after the second Roxy. <laughs> it was like well, third, I guess it was the first. The first Roxy was no, owned by the, the Russians. Second. Oh, and then right, right, right. Jim bought it from them, and then that location had to vacate because they they had to somebody like tore down that entire shopping center. The owner built, of yeah, the owner of of that entire block. Yeah, the landlord. Yeah. Sold that land to uh, I don't I don't know if it was um, um, Health Advent or something or like that HCA it's one or, of those or little mini those. clinics in there now. Yep, they bulldozed that entire block and put in one of those those uh, those urgent care meta clinics yeah. there, which has since closed. Oh, has it? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Well, maybe he can go back and buy it and reopen the Roxy in the original location. 
That'd be that would be. But, I don't know. I don't know. Poetic justice doesn't seem like the right <laughs> term to use there, but that would be funny to me. And uh, yeah, so that happened one night with uh, Metal Wars uh, before the band was even finished playing. These these uh, it was like Latino dance night. So mm-hmm. they they started walking up there on the stage and setting up their keyboards and setting up their their you know sound equipment and stuff. And this band was like, "What the hell's going on?" And then Kilroy was like, I have no idea. i got to figure this out. What the fuck? This is completely fucked. And so he goes and talks to somebody and come to find out uh, that night was double booked um, because uh, <laughs> the guy that double booked it quit. He was like, he was just <laughs> fucking up their schedule because he was mad at them or something. At least that, that was the story we got. So, um, yeah, that that was a big mess. So, like like you said, it was just like, <laughs> but with the, with the cowbells and the, ah! <laughs> you know the latin flair <laughs> and so like these 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 you know beautiful couples are out there on that dance floor salsa dancing and cutting doing that the rug thing. yeah i mean they were they were great and and the people that were there i'm like hey what's going on I'm like oh it's time to dance you know like they're just having a great time they came to party and they they uh, they partied but like you said before everything was moved out of the house by the metal <clears throat> bands it was uh it was full-on dance time cool and story it- bro <laughs> the next time we have uh, our good buddy Mitch on, yeah, I want you to lock this in your memory. Oh man, because I want you to re- I want you to bring it up just out of the blue. I want you to ask <laughs> Mitch to tell us a story of him at the Grand Emporium after he had already consumed a fifth of Jack Daniels in the parking lot. Oh dear God! There was a fight involved. <laughs> 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 of course. There was a fifth of Jack Daniels. There's going to be a fight. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Dear listener. <laughs> we have a uh, mutual friend that was there. One of your difference played that night. And uh, our uh, good buddy, Big Ron. And uh, Ron's a big boy. And uh, Named Big Ron. He's a big boy. He's not a little guy, and it's ironic. No, he's he's a big boy. Aptly named. And uh, with with just a word, he convinced the doorman that it was okay not to throw Mitch out that night. (laughs) (laughs) This is a good time, though. The only doorman I ever saw there was Kilroy. Collecting money, throw it in a in a clear tub, little right, little bin. All right, all right. There was always an all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I remember the first Club Wars. I think uh, that I saw there was like a world music band that played. There was some kind of um, you know punk rockabilly band that put, no. There was a <clears throat> punk band and a rockabilly band that played, and then um, a friend, uh, some friends of mine, they they had a band. Called uh, Sonic Voodoo. They they played that night hmm. too. They they won that round, but um, it was I, it was all kinds of different stuff. And so I saw Jim standing there. I'd never met him before. I'm like, so you're responsible for all this? This is totally cool. I was completely blown away. <laughs> you know, I, I don't remember what year or uh, what number Club Wars it was, mm-hmm. but uh, 2000, 2005 ish. I think 2005 one degree difference one club wars won the whole thing and you opened for freakers ball that was the year before that, oh. that was the uh the thing okay so it was just bragging rights we were pissed the yeah, next I year bet. we're like god damn it what really <laughs> what what so but yeah. it was all about ticket sales that's what you really had to do to win you know, once you got to the finals, it was yeah. it was like I think I think he did a fifty fifty mm-hmm. fan vote and then judge vote his anonymous judges. I was a judge. I, I, I was, was. A, I was a judge n- numerous times. Yeah. Um, sidewise, sidewise, sidewise are those guys are are great friends of mine. I was just randomly at America's Pub the night that sidewise had their first round mm-hmm. of club wars and so jim was, was like you want to be a judge uh, sean, yeah, sean sure. thibodeau joined 
Right, the, way, before, way before him. Way before that. Were, so they just had one guitar player, or was it two the whole time? No, they had guitar, two guitar players. Okay, it was so, um, okay. It was. They're a great rock band. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember really loving their uh, their cover of uh, Nine Inch Nails. Nico like is awesome. Whole, Nico's cool. Yeah, Nico is super cool. No, it was uh, um, Matt on guitar and Scott. Scott Anderson. The original lineup, Matt and Scott were their guitar players. But yeah, I, I met those guys uh, judging them for their Club Wars performance, and they killed it then. And then you fast forward, and they got to play Shipwrecked. They did. Yeah, Shipwrecked with, um, with uh, Seven, Seven Dust. Dust. Yeah. That particular cruise, uh, Nico, the lead singer, he ended up winning... Uh, the blackjack tournament and has the blackjack table board that was part of his, the the winning of that. That's incredible. Yeah, I met Nico when when I met uh, Lejean at um, at a we were we were at um, Midland Theater. Uh, they came with mm-hmm. uh, uh, in this moment. And uh, my buddy oh, Fritz. Oh, I was at that show. Okay. Yep. My buddy Fritz had uh, um, uh, brought me along with him, and we hung out with the Bob uh, from from uh, KQ. Asshole Bob. <laughs> As- asshole. <laughs> if if you know him, you know him. If you don't, well, he's he's not really an asshole, but there's so much to this man, so much. But anyway, so uh, we um, we we met that night. And uh, met Nico there, and you know, hung out with uh, with their families for just a, a little bit, and had a great night. It was great, you know, seeing uh, seeing the band walk on stage uh, from the other side of, of the of the theater stage, and uh, you know, after you know, getting to meet some of them, and then it was great. It was a great night, but um, yeah, I I have nothing. Nothing bad to say about any of them. Yeah, they've all been cool to me, and they're just from what I can tell, nobody's got a bad word to say about any of them. Yep. Yeah. Complete off subject, but sidewise related. Mm-hmm. And I know you listen regularly to ninety eight nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that I got Sirius XM in the car, I typically yeah. I usually have that turned on. So so I've my my ninety eight nine rock days. Are kind of behind me. Mine but. took a huge hit when I joined a second band and started a podcast <laughs> and <laughs> and a podcast and Moose retired. Right. Yeah. Of course, he's over on uh, KCFX right now, uh, filling in for uh, for Slacker. He lives out here somewhere because yeah. I because I, I pass him all the time. Yeah, he's, he's right down the right down the highway here. Yeah. I mean technically I guess Johnny Dare does too. He lives in Western yeah, Shawnee. Yeah. I don't think we uh finished our ratings on this one. We didn't. We started at nose and went on a tangent that turned into uh Oh do we not even, a three tiered tangent. Do we not even get to <laughs> present to uh palette? No. So just to catch up, I gave it a four on the nose. Mr. W two gave it a three and three quarters on the on the nose and now palette i gave it a four and a half what did you give it shit the bed <laughs> really you gave it a I gave you it gave a it a shit the a bed <laughs> <laughs> well to me a shit the bed is a five <laughs> well shit the bed look what just walked in no Rest shit the bed the is we're, we're we're eye to eye <laughs> yeah how about the finish i gave it a four and a half i gave it four and a half holy mother of pearl <laughs> Presentation? You're not gonna believe this. What? I gave it a four and three quarters. God bless America. I, <laughs> I, I was gonna throw my pen if you said a five. Four and three quarters. <laughs> That's fine. I gave it a five. I gave it a five. It look at what you had to go by on the on the on the screen over here. Oh, uh, yep. And then the picture you showed me looked better than what was on the screen. I would have called that a five. That's a beautiful cocktail on the screen. But what you brought up, what you made, what you created right here in Save the Burn Studios <laughs> was better than that. And it was it didn't have a straw in it like that cocktail does. Couldn't use a straw. 
Men don't drink from straws. <laughs> so said Johnny Dare's Uncle Polly. I don't think anyone... <laughs> Does anyone drink cocktails from not straws? Not cocktail. Not I mean, cocktails, come on. Cocktail. Not cocktails. So, what did you total end up? Eight and three quarters. Eight and three quarters. It's Jesus. It's weird to say eight and three quarters and write down eight point seven five. <laughs> it's like rubbing your your head and patting your belly. Is that or right? Pat right. Pat your right, head right. and rub your belly. Yeah, either one. Yeah, I can do it if I start one and concentrate. I gave it a nine, a nine nine point oh. All right, this you, was a nine point oh cocktail for me. You know, we have not done it on the podcast yet, so it is not savor the burn official. Oh, but a little while ago, I sent you a picture of a cocktail that I was playing around with. Mm-hmm. And it's called the Nutty Professor. You haven't sent me those pictures in a while. And that's all right. I straight up told you this is a five if we do this one. All right. So we Nutty have not, Professor. That was in one of the uh, the Nick and Nora glass. And you just got those, so that that couldn't have been that it's long. ago. Not that ago. long ago. Yep. That was what so else in good. it? That was so good. I'm guessing peanut. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and, and, and look at that. No, that was um, bourbon, uh, orgate, orgate, or orgate syrup. Okay. Uh, it's an almond based syrup. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it had lemon simple syrup in it. Okay. It, yeah. Hmm. But it had floating right on top of it one of those dehydrated uh, lemon slices. Okay, sounds good. When we do that one again, we gotta we gotta find. What is the, it made with? Like what spirit is what I mean? Honestly, I don't remember okay. what spirit I used at, at, at the time. I, I'd have to go back and Booker's? look. Bookers. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <clears throat> We're gonna find something better than what I made it that particular night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, figure out what it was that you used. And then we'll see if there is something else. Because up up the ante. If it's honestly, I I I think I used a a Buffalo Trace or or something like that. So I I, did. I I tell you, I finally found some Buffalo Trace at High V. Yes, that's awesome. I did. I did. I I bought the smaller bottle. I thought I was getting the bigger bottle, but it doesn't matter. But um, I I blew through half of that within a few days. We need to. We need to circle back around on Buffalo Trace. It's really good. Uh, and maybe if you've got any left, I maybe do. maybe bring it over mm-hmm. and let's do a side by side of that and my newly acquired single barrel Buffalo Trace. Yeah, let's do that. I will not open that bottle again because it so. will affect the taste. So I'll I'll definitely yeah let's do that. The last I saw, they did have a bottle left uh, up there at, at High V. Hmm. If they still have it, I'll grab it. Yeah, and I'll bring that in. And, and that way, it's unopened. The air didn't affect the taste. And depending it on does that. And depending on wh- when that is, maybe we call in Faith and Tim. That'd be good because they also have the exact same single barrel bottle from the exact single barrel okay yeah let's do that it was it was a store pick and so both both of our bottles came from the exact same barrel that would be good but until that happens dear listener thank you for listening for this episode of the savor the burn podcast um be sure to follow us on all the socials every social that you're on give us a search check us out savortheburn.com uh, has uh, lots of very cool information. It's always constantly being updated. Um, there's always uh, new bottles in the liquor cabinet, new cocktails in the cocktail section. He's, he's always working on something. And be sure to send us an email, info at savertheburn.com. Send Mr. Wayne over there across the table. W2 at savertheburn.com. Don't look around. It's you. It's <laughs> oh, me. You. Yeah, me. you. Uh, if you want to send me an email, Jonathan at savertheburn.com. That's right. Me. John. If you want to send me your favorite banana bread recipe, please feel free. I'm a I'm a regular Betty Crocker at home. I might just make it up and tag you in it when I'm done. 
Are you challenging Miss Katie? Banana bread. I'd never I would lose. <laughs> I would lose before I started when it comes to challenging Miss Katie. It's there's, been a minute. There's a zero percent chance. Yeah, we had banana bread what once? Oh, we've had it a couple times. We've had it a couple times? Okay. I think we're overdue. We are overdue. We need some banana bread. We need some banana bread. Banana bread. Where are you, banana bread? <laughs> Hopefully you're listening to the Save of the Burn podcast. Give her a high five next time you see her. It probably won't be too long. (laughs) Stupid whist. He's got me thinking fuzzy. (laughs) Well, speaking of fuzzy, no matter where you are, who you're with, what you're doing with your fuzzy, always remember, (laughs) hey-o, family show, keep Keep on on burning. burning. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you you were busy focusing on the fuzzy family show. <laughs>